Hey guys, what's going on? It's Pags here, uh, your lovely host. Today, I'm going to teach you a little bit about JavaScript. I've worked in capillary collection. I've been a software engineer for a dermatology company. I've been a software engineer for a data collection service and blockchain protocol and, um, and a few other companies. So today, I, I hope to share some of my knowledge around JavaScript that um, hopefully can help you. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is the functionality of, of web development. It is the, the thing that allows us to have a button that gets clicked on YouTube and the button will flash and say, you've subscribed. Or, or when you like a video on YouTube, it, it'll give you the functionality to like a video on YouTube. A metaphor is uh, HTML is kind of like the, the, the two by fours and the, the foundation of a house. Right, if if we're metaphorically building these digital houses in, in the web web world, um, HTML would be the the foundation. CSS would be the styling. It would be like the window panelings that we choose, the colors we paint the house, you know, um, maybe the color we paint the fence. But the JavaScript is gonna be the functionality, right? So when we open up the door, that's that's a function like of the door opening. When we flick on a light switch and the lights work, you can see these two lights behind me. That would be the equivalent of JavaScript in the web world. So with that being said, um, let's, let's zoom back into the tutorial here. And I have a blank project. Now, all I did was just build a file and drag and drop it into my VS Code editor. Now, over here in the JavaScript uh, Explorer area, right, where it says JavaScript, um, you know, the, the file um, that I've, I've labeled it, I want to click on this, this new file, or I can right click this area and press new file. Either or, I'll generate a new file. But just what we wanna do at a bird's eye view, we need to generate three files. One's gonna be our HTML file, the other's gonna be our CSS style sheet. And then the third one is gonna be that lovely JavaScript file. So let's go ahead and do the first two really quick, and let's get on to the JavaScript file. So I, I, I labeled this first file index.html, I'm gonna press exclamation point, and that'll give me a quick template of just a HTML snippet. In my body tag, I, I need to build two things. One is going to be the count of the button that we wanna make, and then the second is going to be the button that can control the count. So with that being said, let's go ahead and build the button here. So I'll start with a div and say, um, um, let's see, count, and it'll say count like this and count zero. Now I do wanna give this an ID and this ID will be count. Now underneath our count div, I wanna start a new uh, HTML element and I'll name it button and I'll say click to count up. And all we wanna do is just have a button that we can click and it counts up. So let's go back to the button right here and I'll give this an ID as well and I'll name it button. Awesome guys, we're almost done with the HTML style sheet or the, excuse me, the HTML file. There's just kind of two last things that we need to focus on. And the two last things are going to be linking up the style sheet that doesn't exist yet and then linking up our JavaScript file that doesn't exist yet neither. So we can go ahead and pre-do those because I, I know what I'm going to name the, the uh, style sheet. And then I also know what I'm going to name this the JavaScript file. So if I go to my head tag, and this is a really important step, by the way. Um, it won't work unless we do this. So if I go to my head tag, I can open up some space right here and I can start typing link. And you can see my IntelliSense gives me a option for CSS. <clears throat> If your IntelliSense does not do that, that's okay. Just uh, make sure to type this out of link. Um, this attribute style sheet, um, and then this attribute style.css. So this attribute right here is what we need to name our CSS file. So um, I'm going to copy that over, style.css, and let me pull these up uh, left and right. So. All I did was just make that CSS file on the left here. And now we can start styling up these, these divs and buttons. Um, 
But we won't do that quite yet. There's one more step I want to do. And this step is really important as well. Let me close out of the style sheet for right now. Is I want to come below the body tag and I want to add my script. Now the script tag is going to um, look like this. And it has an a attribute, it takes an SRC. And this SRC is similar to our style sheet. This is what we named our style sheet. In JavaScript, we now need to build a file or, or link up the file right here. So I'll say button.js. And this button.js, it just needs to be the exact name that we named the file of JavaScript. So I'm gonna open my Explorer again. And here is what, it, what I'm referencing, is we need to name our JavaScript file this right here, button.js. So button.js. And let me close out of that. I didn't mean to go to, the next, go to that file quite yet, but I just wanna explain a point. You can name this button.js file, whichever you want. It's just, this needs to be the same name as this. If I wanna name this a bunch of random letters for whichever arbitrary reason, all I need to do is just make sure that it's named the same and the file would still be connected. Um, so it being labeled button.js is not relevant. It's only relevant because we are deciding to build a button. I just wanna make that point clear. Now I'm gonna undo these changes. I'm gonna rename it button.js. I just wanted to highlight the point that this needs to be the same name as this. And the style sheet, the style.css needs to be named the same name as this. It's really important to understand. So that's just about everything that we need here. Um, we can move on to the style sheet and then ultimately move on to the JavaScript bit. So let's build a style sheet. I just opened up the style.css and I'm going to go live in my server. I have a button down here that says go live. If you do not see that, it's likely because your extensions, um, if you go to your extensions and you need to download live server, this one. Um, and then if you still don't see that, maybe do a little bit of uh, help on Google or try pressing command L and then O right after. That should fire open your live server. Um, but so I'll press that, go live. And let me show you guys what just popped up. I now have this window that has the count and a click to count up. So let me push this off to the side so we can constantly see that. And I'm going to zoom or uh, resize my windows. Let me even zoom in just a smidge, right? I'm going to close this HTML file. We no longer need it for right now, but we will come back to one point, which is these IDs and the, the one saying count and the one saying button. We will remember that for a moment. But let me close out of these two files. And I just want to focus on this, this style.css. So in the style.css, I'm going to put a star that stands for selecting all elements. And I'll say font family. And I'm going to choose a better font just to briefly style this up. Just, just a smidge. We're not going to focus too much on the styling. I'll have a Tailwind tutorial in a moment. But um, I just want to edit some of this. So, And then I'll say hashtag button. And the hashtag button, this actually does relate to this ID. You guys don't need to follow me on this bit. I just want to show you guys why we said hashtag button. Um, the hashtag button is pointing at this button here. Hashtag this button. Uh, the reason why the button, the hashtag works is because it's an ID. If we said class and button, we would do the period. If we wanted to do all uh, HTML elements name button, we would just do that. But because we're using an ID, I can go ahead and actually just say hashtag button and my CSS style sheet now knows we're talking about this element. Um, okay, let me close out of that and you guys can follow back again. So if I go down here to button, I can now say color and this will change the text color to white and I'll say background color and we'll just choose something. Um, I'll say blue, that's perfectly fine. I'll add a little bit of padding. I'll say eight pixels and 16 pixels, just to give us a little bit more height and more width. 
So the top, uh, the first element will be top and bottom, and the next element will be the X and Y's, or the left and right's. So we have more padding on the sides than we do the height. Um, I'll say border radius, and I'll say eight pixels. That's fine, just to round it a little. I'll say border none, and outline none as well. So we have a button on the right, you can see. It just looks like a button. I can't see that I'm hovering over it, so I'll say cursor pointer, and now I should see that uh, thing turn to a pointer, but you can hear my mouse clicking, and I don't see any visual change. So I'll do one last thing, which is I'm gonna copy this down, and I'll say hashtag button colon hover, or excuse me, colon active. And what this means is when I do the active pseudo class, I can apply new classes to it. So let me get rid of color. Let me get rid of padding, border, border, outline, cursor. I'll delete it all. I just need the background color to change a little bit. So I'll choose a new blue. And now when I click the button, I should see that it changes. You can hear me click. And you can now see visually that the button is just changing for a moment. So that works great. Now let's go ahead and style our style sheet. Or excuse me, let's link up our JavaScript file now. So if I open up Explorer again, and I go to button.js, and if I close the Explorer, let me close out of the style sheet, and now we're in our, our button.js file. Now, I want to reference the index.html file one more moment before going into our, um, let's see, I need, I, I, I need it to, I need it to open up. Why is it being a pain? Oh, there it goes, boom. Okay, so um, I need both the style.css and the, uh, or excuse me, I need both the index.html file and the button.js file to make this point. So I'm gonna bring the button.js file left and right. I just wanna make a point. We're going to need to make sure that one, this script tag, again, let's just verify, make sure that it says button.js and the file, the JavaScript file we're working in is button.js. And the second thing we wanna do is now look at the elements that we want to bring into our JavaScript file. So this JavaScript file right now is blank. It has no idea what we're pointing at. It has no idea what to do. So we now need to define the, the first item that it, it's going to um, pull in from the HTML file. So the first item we want to pull in, I'm gonna say const button. And again, we can, similar to the file, we can name this whatever we want. I'm only naming it button because it's relevant to what we are building. So I need to say const button is assigned to document dot get element by id and i make just a little bit more room we should be able to see that whole thing so const button equals document dot get element by id and what i want to do in this document dot get element by id is invoke it and put a button in there now the point i want to make between these two files is this button can be again named whatever it's just pointing at this ID. When we, when we call it button, it's pointing at this ID right here. When we say get element by ID, it's pointing right here. So again, this can be named whatever, but these two things just need to be named the same. Um, you guys do not need to say all these random letters. I just want to prove that point, um, that, that these would actually still be linked up. But what I wanna do is, is move it back to button and change this back to button. It's just very important that this ID right here is the same thing as this. Um, it's not relative to this naming, this is just naming it how we name it in the JavaScript file. But uh, this, again, quotes right here needs to be the same as the quotes right here. I'll put it that way. So, um, and likewise with the count, we'll do the count in a moment. We won't do that right now. Let's just do the button. So I closed out of the index.html file, and what I wanna do is build a variable called, um, well, I could say count um, equals zero. And this is just gonna end up being our number right here. But the next thing I wanna do is build a function. And this was the, the 
part that I, I mentioned earlier of building all the doors that open in the house, or if you click a like on um, on YouTube and the, the like will change from 42 likes to 43 likes after you click it, this is what it is doing behind the scenes. So I wanna build something called a function here, and I can name this function whichever I want. So I could say um, handle uh, button count. And this name, is just something we can choose. Again, I can name this a whole bunch of random letters and count if, if, that's, if that's what I know it's gonna be. Um, the only reason why I'm, I'm naming it handle button count is because that is a pattern that I've got into is handle and then what I want the function to kind of do. Um, and then I want to invoke the function at the end here with two parentheses. And then I wanna do my curly brackets, two of those. And this is what I should be left with right now. So we have const button equals document.get element by ID. It's pointing at the button. We've built a new variable called count and we've assigned it. Oops, did not mean to say count D, uh, but we've assigned it to zero. And now we've started our function handle button count, or I can even say handle button click. Whichever you wanna name it, that's perfectly fine. Now in this handle button click, I'm going to say console.log button is, is clicked. So um, if we go back to our live server, if I open up the, um, the console, either by pressing inspect or command option I, I should see my console. I'm in the mobile view, I'm going to take it out of the mobile view. And you can see that if I click this button, um, we, we are actually not gonna see anything happen. So if I click this, boom, we could still see our CSS doing this, but nothing is going to happen because we've yet to give this button this functionality. So what I wanna do is one more thing. It's say button.add event listener. And you can see that it says click. And then finally, we want to pass in our function, handle button click, comma, boom, handle button click, just like this. So now our button from the HTML sheet is listening for a click. And when it clicks, it's gonna fire off this function. So however you wanna order these things is up to you guys. When we use the term function, functions, um, they do something called hoisting, so they can actually work um, out of out of JavaScript's uh, single thread. But um, enough enough of getting too far behind the scenes, let's let's just talk about, um, again, one more time, what is what is going on is we're listening to that HTML element. So this this blue button that we uh, labeled over here, this button right here, and we're listening for that click. And when there's a click event, we are gonna fire off this function. So now when we press the click button or click to count up, we should see this console message, button is clicked. Let's click, button is clicked. And there it is. So the, the last bit of logic now we wanna do is add the count into this function. We want to count up and we wanna see it on the DOM. So let's do something like this. We'll say count, we'll say plus equals one. And what that basically is saying is count equals count plus one, right? This is just the shorthand of, of doing this. And all I'm saying is count is assigned to the count plus one more. That's all I'm doing. This is just the shorthand for it. And let's go ahead and console log this count now. So now when we, press the click to count up button, we should see the count go from one, two, three, four, as we're seeing here. But we're not seeing it on the DOM. And the reason why we're not seeing it on the DOM is because the DOM being this, this uh, window over here is because we're not pulling that element in and then assigning that, um, that new value to the DOM. So let's do that now. Um, let me go ahead and pop that off screen. 
And what I want to do is go back to my HTML uh, file and I want to look at what I named it here. And I named it ID equals count. So similar to us pulling the button in and we named it get element by ID by button, we want to do a similar thing. We want to say const count equals document dot get element by ID and the ID is named count. So I'm, I can either copy this down like this and rename some things, or I can retype it out. Const equals document dot get element by ID and count. Now we have an error because we have two variables named count. I'll rename it by count shown on DOM. And what I want to do here is um, just display the text content of this count. So how I want to do this in our function is say count shown on DOM dot text content equals the count and I want to say dollar sign and count. Now this should be pointing at our HTML element and we're going to replace that HTML element. This text content is what this would be called. We are going to replace it with what we've declared here, which is count and then finally the count variable here. So if we've done this correctly, now when we click the click to count up, we should be able to see this button count up. Okay, guys, fixed it, fixed it, had, had a minor bug. Um, so if, if I rename this to count display and rename this to count display and refresh the, the page, I should have this working. What we're doing again is pulling that count display from the document.id or the document get element by ID. Um, so over here, we're pulling in this count display. We've declared a variable called count. When the button is clicked, we're now firing off a function called handle button click. And in the handle button click function, we're upping the count by one. And then in our count display, we're now showing that new count. Um, so this content here is just going to replace whatever content is in the middle of here. And even if I, again, label this a bunch of random letters, it would show a bunch of random letters. So I'm going to label it count just because that's what we labeled it here. And we're replacing that number zero or that string zero rather with a uh, dynamically rendered number. And if you follow this properly, you should be able to click this button and the count goes up. Guys, thank you so much for watching my JavaScript uh, tutorial. I hope there was something uh, fruitful for you and I hope my knowledge helped you learn something. I'm looking forward to the next one. I'll see you soon.